ways our eyes work. If something is in motion, it usually has some kind of blur associated with it. We call this motion blur. As it moves one side to the other, it would have some level of blurring as it moves. Now, the faster it moves, the greater the blur. The less it moves, the less blur. Okay, so if it's slow moving, it's got a very little blur. If it's fast moving, it has a very fast blur. Now, you can simulate motion blur inside of Sony Vegas. Now, I have got an animated title here. You can see that the title goes through, but you can see that as it goes through, it's staying at full quality. Okay, I'm at best here, and it plays through a little bit slowly at best, so I'm going to take it down to good auto. And you can see it slightly softens, but that's not motion blur, that's just a view. How did I create that? Well, I used a vent pan crop, and I just animated, if I just zoom out a bit here, you can see... And here's the, the playhead here. You can see that I just basically went from one side to another to create the text moving through the screen, okay? So it's just a sample text and animated with a vent pan crop. Very simple animation. But as it goes through the scene, nothing happens in the sense of blur. It just moves, but actually it's as sharp here as if it were static text. Now I've got static text here that's not moving. It's the same sharpness, even though it is in motion. So what we need to do is simulate motion blur. And the beauty of Sony Vegas is that we can actually simulate that motion blur with a video bus track. Now, video bus tracks are found under the view menu. So when you go to view, you'll see all the way down here, we've got a video bus track, control shift B to actually bring it up. And when you bring up a video bus track, it's going to affect all the tracks above it, okay? All the video tracks above it. So it's kind of like a master control for all the tracks above. For example, you can change the mute settings of all the tracks above. You can mute them all on and all off together with a video bus track, as opposed to having to go through each individual track to turn them on and turn them off or whatever you need to do with opacity. So to be able to do this, if you right click on your video bus track, you see you've got insert and remove envelope and there's mute. So you can be turning your tracks on and off with mute. You've got fade to color and video super sampling. But the one we're interested in is motion blur amount. When you click on that, a pink line appears. And this is controlling the amount of blurring that takes place. Now it is animatable as any of these envelopes are, which means if you double click on it, you can add a point. And if I double click again, I can add another point and you can change it. Okay, So you can add as many points as you like to go up and go down. You can do all kinds of bits and pieces that you want. So it is fully animatable. Just going to get rid of some of these. Okay, so I've got just the points available here. It's a single line that's going to affect everything. So this text is actually moving relatively slowly. If we actually play it through in real time, you'll see that it's a relatively slow movement. It's not a fast movement. So therefore, we don't want a huge amount of motion blur. If you pull the line up, you can increase the amount of motion blur to crazy or just a little bit to indicate that there is a bit of movement. Okay, and then if something's moving a lot quicker, Say we've got this, this Saxworks bit before that we had, which we created from Saxworks and imported as an image sequence. We can actually create a different level of motion blur with that one. Now, you can simulate motion blur inside of Saxworks, but it takes a lot longer to render. And if you can get away with it, you might find it's going to work a lot better if you use the motion blur options inside of Vegas Pro to do motion blur than actually exporting motion blur from Zaxworks. Uh, the advantage of Zaxworks is it gives a bit more control over actual motion blur, the amount of images that you've got, the amount of copies to do it, but you might find this a lot quicker. But I might say I want this one to be a lot quicker. So if I double click here and double click here to create another point, I can pull it up and I can say, okay, at this point, and you can see we get that lovely feedback telling me I'm at the beginning there. When it comes to the Zaxworks image sequence, it's going to blur a lot quicker. Okay, so we've got this really fast blur. It kind of almost just appears on screens. It blurs on and blurs off. But notice, when it's stationary, there is no blurring. Again, I've got this standard item that's not moving. It's got no blurring whatsoever, even though the level is hugely high. So when something is stationary, there is no blurring. It only blurs when it's in motion. Now, we can also control how this blurring looks. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this one up just to make it a little bit more obvious. As well as adding it through the video bus, on the project settings, we can actually change how it looks. So if you go to project settings, I'm just going to put them to one side here, you'll see that you've actually, under the video tab, you've got motion blur type. 
and you've got three different basic types. You've got Gaussian, Pyramid, and you need to apply it to see it, and also Box. So there's Box, and again, you need to apply it to see it. So they're different looks for Motion Blur. However, I'm just going to go back to Gaussian at the moment and click Apply. There are other settings underneath those which are asymmetric. And what that means is it's designed such that the blur follows the movement so that the leading edge should look sharper in real, which is real world. So that leading edge is sharp and what follows is the blur. So if you have a look at what we've got here and I go for Gaussian asymmetric, the leading edges should look slightly sharper when I click apply. And I click apply and you can see the leading edge is slightly sharper. So in other words, the samples are going behind the actual track itself or behind the image itself rather than sort of being spread evenly between the two. So it is actually more realistic if you go for asymmetric Gaussian. Now you can see how many copies there are. I think there's probably something like eight copies. One, two, three, four. Yeah, something like eight copies is being created when you're doing motion blur. So as it moves across, there are eight samples or eight copies going from high opacity to low opacity to create the illusion of motion blur. Now that, of course, means a render hit. It's going to take longer to render motion blur because it's doing eight times the work it would have done otherwise. Of course, the end result can be a lot more pleasing to the eye and look a lot more professional. And as I say, if you do get things like Zaxworks, you can increase that to 16 or 32 copies and, and really have it looking super smooth. But for most applications, eight copies are going to look brilliant and you can create really nice looks with this sort of option. So bear in mind, I'm going to click OK. Bear in mind that you've got this option in there and I'm just going to go back to the beginning and just going to play it through. See if it's stuttery. No, that's quite nice. So you've got that kind of motion blur look that looks really nice and pulls through. OK, and then if we go on to this next item here, and we play from there, go into the Zax works, you can see it kind of blurs in, it's going so fast, stays and then blurs out, gives us a, almost a, a sort of a time sense. But when it actually comes to the item that's not moving, you've got no blur whatsoever. And you can control all of that down here on the video bus. So if I wanted to finish, say at this point here, I could double click to create a point, double click to create one next to it, then I can pull it down and say, right, from this point onwards, there will be no motion blur. And that's exactly the same approach if you were to actually insert, say, a mute control. So you can turn things up and down with mute and you create a bus. If I do mute, I've got a different line. And again, that line is going up and down to turn things on and off for the whole track. And you can animate those. Turn the mute one off. Do bear in mind, of course, that you do have the option to hold the shift key and draw a path. So you can change the motion blur amount sort of manually if you want to by holding the shift key and creating this slightly more stylized look obviously for my particular application that that sort of go down at this point and then up again at this point slightly high and then down at this point so you can create that holding the shift key and click and drag to draw a bus we've done that in similar buses before so once again there we go we've got it nicely blurring as it goes through you can change the blur amount if you like this is asymmetric so you've got a kind of a sharper leading edge and then we've got the Zaxworks one here and so sort of blurs in very heavily and then blurs out very heavily but the still image as you can see just plays as a still image well i hope you found this tutorial useful and you'll actually start using motion blur it's a wonderful effect to add in but don't forget you do have a render hit when it actually plays through